Zack Snyder's zombie heist film Army of the Dead is a lot of fun, but it leaves viewers with a few mysteries. Here are some of the biggest unanswered questions in Army of the Dead. Spoilers ahead. Like most zombie movies, Army of the Dead doesn't go out of its way to explain the science behind its undead outbreak. That said, it does tease viewers with hints about how it all happened. We know that Zeus, the zombie king, was being transported in some sort of military convoy. He escaped when the convoy got into an accident outside Las Vegas and promptly began wreaking havoc on Sin City. Yet how exactly he wound up on that military transport in the first place is never addressed. Before the accident that kicks off all the exciting events in the movie, two of the soldiers are speculating about what they're transporting, revealing that Zeus's very existence must be highly classified. The last thing they consider before everything goes south is that the US military has gotten its hands on an alien. Area 51, secret hangar, autopsy. It raises the question of whether Zeus's origin is extraterrestrial. Maybe not little green men, but more likely some sort of alien virus. But in the end, these are just two guys bouncing around theories. The truth is anyone's guess, since the movie only dangles this little hint before jumping into the action. Similar to how we don't know where Zeus came from, who he was before he became a zombie, or what caused his transformation in the first place, we also don't know anything about the military's plans for him. We don't even know what the convoy's destination was. The only clue we have is that its route took them by Las Vegas. What we do know is that none of the people riding in the caravan had any idea about what sort of cargo they were transporting. Since the only person who realizes the danger the soldiers are in after Zeus's cage breaks open is the dispatcher at the other end of the radio. All right, listen carefully. Gather whoever can walk or move and get away from the payload immediately. Wait, what are you telling me to do? It seems odd that nobody who knows what's going on would have accompanied such precious cargo, making us wonder what was really going on here. Especially if the military was developing zombies as a weapon, it feels strange that they wouldn't send someone who knew exactly how dangerous Zeus was. So what was the purpose of moving him? Where was he going? What was awaiting him at his destination? As far as the heist part of the movie goes, Army of the Dead keeps it simple and sweet. Scott Ward and his team are hired by the owner of the casino to break into his own vault and retrieve the money inside. Yet once they get to the safe, it falls on Dieter to break into it because for some reason, Tanaka never gave them the combination. Hi, my name is Dieter and I'm going to open what cannot be opened. <laughs> are you kidding me? No, we need to get to open the safe. We lose him, we got nothing. Okay, sure. This is a heist movie. It definitely needs a thrilling safe cracking scene. And Army of the Dead delivers on that. But this was Tanaka's safe in the first place, so it seems reasonable he would have known how to get into it. Even though it's later revealed that Tanaka never actually cared about the money and was setting the mission up to fail, why wouldn't Ward have just asked for the combination? Tanaka could have at least given him a fake one. He lied about the non-lethal deterrence they'd have to get through before reaching the vault, so he probably never expected them to get inside in the first place. That it doesn't seem to occur to anyone on the team that there should have been a much easier way to get into that safe, even if it proved to not work, seems a little bizarre. Midway through Army of the Dead, when Kate laments that her friend Gita is likely dead, Lily tells her a story about another guy she once helped sneak into the city who got separated from the group. He was left for dead, only to stumble back out three days later, still alive. He said that the zombie king, Zeus, had kept him and a couple other people imprisoned and returned to take them one at a time. Later, we see this is exactly what happened to Gita, and even see one of her friends get dragged out of the room where they're being kept. What we never learn is the purpose of this prolonged sort of psychological torture. If Zeus is turning his prisoners into more alpha zombies, why wait? Why not turn them all at once? And if that's not what he's doing, what's going on in zombie headquarters? Do zombies need to eat fresh meat in order to keep from desiccating like the shamblers scattered around the outskirts of the town? Or is there something else going on? We never see what Zeus is doing with those people, although it's safe to say that it's nothing good. Unlike the rest of Ward's team, Kate doesn't brave the zombie-infested streets of Las Vegas for money. Rather, she's there for her friend Gita, a single mom who sneaked into the city to break open a slot machine and collect enough money to buy freedom for herself and her kids. When Gita doesn't come out of the city with Lily, Kate takes it upon herself to join her dad's team and track her down. Against all odds, she's successful, and unlike most of the other members of Ward's team, the two friends actually make it onto the escape helicopter intact. However, an enraged Zeus also manages to jump onto the helicopter, and the ensuing fight ends with a catastrophic crash in the Nevada desert, just outside the nuclear blast zone. 
Kate is thrown from the wreckage and is miraculously okay, but when she goes to examine the remains of the helicopter, the only body she finds, at least that we see, is Peters, who was killed. Ward is injured a few yards away, and the zombie king was blown to smithereens right before the crash, but we never see Gita again. Did she die in the crash? Was Kate's entire journey all for nothing? Yes, she's probably dead, but by never showing her, Army of the Dead leaves the question open. Just when we thought Ward's entire team had been killed in the disastrous heist, Army of the Dead reveals that there was in fact a single survivor, Vandero, the saw-toting philosopher whom we last saw locked into the safe by a heroic Dieter. Either Dieter didn't lock the safe or there was some sort of failsafe on the inside because somehow Vandero is able to emerge safely after the nuclear blast destroys the city with several duffel bags full of cash in tow. He walks out of the city until he finds an abandoned house with a car and then drives to the nearest airport where he charters a plane to fly to Mexico. I'm not able to just rent you that plane. Um. Unfortunately, while on board, Vandero begins feeling ill and we realize that he's been sporting a zombie bite this whole time. The film ends before we can see what happens next, but that raises some questions about how the zombie infection works. When other characters in the film are bitten, the transformation into a zombie takes place mere minutes later. Yet Vandro is able to travel for hours before he begins to feel the effects. Earlier in the film, characters briefly talk about early symptoms of a zombie infection, which implies some people don't turn right away, but we never learn more about why some are able to hold off the transformation or how long a person can be infected without realizing it. Vandero's airplane surprise also raises the question of whether this means the zombie virus, or whatever it is, is going to spread. Until the very end, Army of the Dead doesn't feel like it leaves much room for a sequel, with Ward's entire team dead and the zombies in Las Vegas destroyed in a nuclear blast. Now that the zombie virus has hitched a ride out of Vegas, is it going to infect the rest of the world? Does the plane manage to land, introducing the virus to a brand new metropolitan population? The answer to this question feels like it should be obvious. After all, a nuclear bomb was dropped on the city. Yet the finality of the military's Las Vegas solution is called into question when Vandero is revealed to have survived. If one casino safe was enough to safely ride out the nuclear strike, it doesn't seem completely out of the question that others could have sought similar shelter. Granted, casino safes aren't like closets that anyone can simply open up and climb inside, but it's plausible that other safes could have been open when the zombie outbreak started and were never properly closed, or that that terrified casino employees might have sought refuge in those safes, turned into zombies while inside, and could still be in there. There could even be unknown camps of survivors hiding out in the vaults. Maybe someone hid in a fridge. There are a ton of options. While a nuclear blast doesn't exactly seem all that survivable, it isn't totally impossible that a few people, zombies or both, might have found a loophole. It seems safe to say that pretty much everyone in Army of the Dead would have been better off if they'd passed on their ambitious mission. Although Kate survives the film and even manages to come out of it with some money thanks to her dad, she's definitely worse for wear. After all, the only reason she goes into the city in the first place is to save her friend, and the end of the film doesn't give any indication that she's successful. And although it's good that she's finally able to make amends with her dad, it comes at the cost of her ultimately having to put a bullet in his head when he starts to turn into a zombie. The last we see of Kate, she's sobbing in the desert as she kneels by her father's body and a military helicopter flies overhead. Chances are that she'll probably be taken to a quarantine camp. However, while her dad gave her enough money to buy her way out of the camps, along with Gita's kids, there's no telling where she'll go after that, especially if Gita is dead. Will Kate become the guardian of Gita's kids? And what will she do once she's bought their freedom? Although Kate ends the movie with enough cash to buy her and Gita's kids their freedom from the quarantine camps, there are plenty of other people in those camps who won't have that sort of money. While we don't know a lot about the quarantine camps, what we do know makes it clear that their inhabitants aren't free to come and go as they please. In anticipation of the nuclear bomb that was about to be dropped on Las Vegas, we know that the camps were being evacuated. But all that does is change their location, not their circumstances, or presumably the guards that treat the refugees so poorly. You know what's more destructive than a nuclear bomb? Words. Army of the Dead doesn't seem to imply that there's much of a long-term plan for the inhabitants of the camps, especially if they don't have a good way to make money. It makes it seem as though the former inhabitants of Las Vegas are simply doomed to live in the camps indefinitely, which doesn't feel like a very optimistic ending. If Army of the Dead ever gets a sequel, here's hoping the camps are finally shut down and their inhabitants released. 
check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.